Now, today we are going to discussing about the 12 steps of ASAP and 7 principles. In our previous lecture, the part 1, we have covered up to step 5. ASAP out of 12 steps, we have covered up to step 5. Now the part 2, from step 6 to 12. And it has up 7 principles we will discuss in this part 2 video. Those who have not watched my part 1 video, I have given the link, copy the link. Please watch my previous video about the has up principles and all steps of the has up. Now the step is 6 to 1. How to tall steps? From 6th step to 12th step, as the principles will start. The 6th step is, we have to conduct hazard analysis and identify the preventive measures for each process step. So, once we verify the process flow with our HACCP team, with the help of our HACCP team, we have conducted hazard analysis from raw metal receiving to the shipment. Every process step, we have to assess the hazards. In my next video, I will do a separate for hazard analysis. How to conduct the hazard analysis, how to identify the potentiality of that particular hazard. If the hazard is potential, then how to determine the significance of the hazard. Based on the significance, whether it comes under critical control point or not at the processing step, these are all we will discuss in our next video. This, this video is exclusively for the hash of 12 steps as well as the 7 principles of the hash of system. So the 6th step is we have to conduct the hazard analysis. So the team should conduct the hazard analysis from each processing step. Ramel receiving, pre-processing, beheading, peeling, soaking, packing, metal detection up to shipment. Then after conducting the hazard analysis, while conducting the hazard analysis, the hazards you all might be knowing, three kinds of hazards. One is biological, chemical and physical hazards are there existing in the food facilities. So based on the hazard analysis, we will determine the hazards which are significant. So we will identify the CCPs. That is HACCP principle 2 and HACCP 12 steps, this one is 7th one. As of step 7 and principles 2 is identify the critical control points. We have to identify the critical control points. Critical control points is nothing, a, a step, a process step at which biological, chemical, or physical hazards must be controlled or eliminated or reduced to an acceptable level. So that's called critical control points. In all food facilities, there are two, two things are existing. One is control point and the second one is critical control point. The control points, all factors can be applied. Where the step, all factors, factors means biological, chemical, physical, all factors will be met. The product is safe. Those are called control points. Where is critical control point? Biological or chemical or physical at the process step will be reduced or eliminated. So next will be level. That's critical control point. So once we establish the critical control point, the third principle is the step number eight. We have to monitor the critical control point. Yes. Why? Because the monitoring system should be sound, efficient and adequate knowledge. So CCP monitoring should be done by the Approved food professionals, especially these are the vulnerable, crucial areas. If lacking of sufficient monitoring, then maybe the violation may occur, deviation may occur. So the next one is, after monitoring the CCPs, the principal number is four. We have to establish critical limits for each CCP. That is as a step number eight. We have to establish critical limits 
for each critical control points. In our facility, our product is cooked frozen streams in various forms. So during our hazard analysis, we have identified three stages of the process which are critical control points. Because the step where we are reducing or we are minimizing, we are controlling the hazards to an export level. For example, terminal receiving, metal detection, uh, cooking, and labeling and packing. So the four CCPs we have identified, these products. Cooked frozen streams, the four CCPs we have identified. So for that monitoring activity have been done. Critical limits. So critical limits for each CCP we have to establish. The critical limits is nothing but the process step. Where? Where the process step means raw metal receiving or metal detection or cooking or labeling. A maximum or minimum value at which a critical control point the biological or chemical or physical hazards can be reduced or minimized eliminated to an export level. For example, the step metal detection. Metal detection if the metal piece fair as for example 1.5 above if the metal is in the product then what will happen the metal will be related to the metal here the CCP eliminating that is the critical limit our critical limit is 1.5 mm farads so the hazards potentiality completely eliminated so below 1.5 is doesn't harm doesn't make injury for example these are the kinds of examples and the labeling step we are yeah we are doing castrations you know shrimp shrimp season allergic so we are doing the labeling that is also the critical CCPs critical control points some of the people may are allergic sufferers vulnerable group vulnerable groups you know young people immunosuppressants adolescents or uh, old age people so for example these are the vulnerable groups if we label the thing the maximum potentiality will be eliminated so we have to establish the critical limits this is the eighth one so has a principle the next has a principle is most of the factories the food facilities not only seafood bakery beverages bottling industries confectionaries candy mints manufacturing industries meat processing industries beef processing industries besides having critical limits everyone is establishing the operating limits operating limits nothing but the criteria which is more stringent than critical limit because of the operational limits established by a production specialist who were exclusively involving in the particular section he could able to know he is having a sound knowledge so based on that he will establish the operational limit the criteria which is more, more stringent in our next video i will explain in details what is the operational limit what is the critical limit so why should we establish the operational limit for each critical limit to avoid the occurrence of deviations how it will help us we will discuss in the next video so after establishing the critical limits the next step is corrective actions establish corrective action procedures so this is ninth one sorry tenth one so establish corrective action procedures when we take corrective actions whenever deviation occurs from a critical limit whenever deviation occurs from a critical limit we must take corrective actions so this is the as a step number 10 so we have to take the corrective actions we have to address what will happen if the cooking step internal core temperature if not meet that then deviation of the critical limit what we have to do we have to recoup or we have to destroy we have to justify in the column how you are minimizing how you are eliminating the hazard what kind of corrective actions you are going to take to remove or to eliminate or to minimize the hazards in the food 
we have to justify and we have to address that based on the scientific data based on the guidelines csfd guidelines based on the national standards we can establish this thing then the 11th step is after establishing the corrective action procedures then we have to verify do the verification system so we have to verify the our system means the has a system complete system complete process flow complete documentation ccp records we have to verify weekly once and it's continuous monitoring continuous monitoring maximum verification should be done in a weekly once verification also should be done by the competent person senior most person should verify the crucial records and monitoring ccp areas there should be the continuous monitoring there should be the data logging system whatever the facilities so we can we can track out we can trace out whenever a deviation occurs we can trace back the product and we can meet we can meet the processing steps we can meet the biological physical chemical factors in the food then the 11th one is verification so verification procedures should be the strong we should have the verification procedures we should implement we should monitor the verification then the last one is the 12th one is establish a record keeping system for all that for all the activities what are the activities you are doing in the food facility we must have record keeping system strong record keeping system absolute records we have to keep separate and we have to maintain 24 months the records based on the self life a gfs standards most of the gfs standards insist as that self life plus 12 months means 36 months most of the food industries who are keeping the product at minus 8 degrees in grade below those temperatures we can keep the product at 18 months to 24 months usually then 24 months that additionally we have to add 12 months 36 months we have to retain the records we have to retrieve the records as and when required if any recall occurs if we have to do the traceability exercise we have to do the mock recall program we should have the mock recall program also and as and when we revise the format we have to amend the format the purpose of the amendment amendment number revision number the recall format number so like that everything we have to maintain so these are the 12 steps and seven principles of the hasap once again i will review recap all these steps the first step is describe the process describe the product and the second step is formation of hasap team if new facility are existing one if you are introducing new product assembling of hasap team then third step is we have to identify the intended use fourth step is we have to construct the flow diagram with the help of the team then fifth one is on site verification of the flow diagram sixth one there has a principle one we have to conduct the hazard analysis and identify the prevent measures for each processing step then seventh one the as of step is seventh and principle two so once we conduct the hazard analysis we have to identify the critical control points in each process step we have to identify the critical control points then next one is once we identify the critical control points the eighth one is monitoring of the critical control points that is as a principle three once we monitor the critical control points we have to establish critical limits for each critical control points has a principle number four that is and step number nine establish critical limits once we establish the critical limits there may be the chances of deviation occurs from a critical limits so we must establish the corrective action procedures that is as a principle number 5 we must establish the corrective action procedures this is step number 10 as of step number 10 and the 11th as of step number 11 is we should have the verification procedures principle number 6 that is as a principle number 6 is established verification procedure as a principle number 7 
establish record keeping system as of step number 12 that is. So these are the 12 steps of the HACCP system and 7 principles of the HACCP. Thank you.